Our mission, to harness the power of the humanities to strengthen our state, guides our work every day. As the COVID-19 pandemic spread, leaving no one untouched in its wake, our role in supporting the cultural infrastructure of New Jersey did not change. Hello, my name is Karen Berkowitz and I'm the Executive Director of the New Jersey Council for the Humanities, the state nonprofit partner of the National Endowment for the Humanities. Through funding made available via the NEH through the CARES Act, we were able to contribute over $660,000 to 84 nonprofit organizations statewide in the face of an emergency situation in 2020. Over the past 50 years, the New Jersey Council for the Humanities has enabled millions of New Jerseyans to engage in meaningful conversations about topics that affect us all. We use the public humanities to understand ourselves and others, something that helps us expand our horizons and consider and appreciate our similarities and differences. connected through social media posts, Zoom calls, a virtual student summer camp, and phone calls to our veterans to assure them we were okay while we adapted to new and creative ways for fundraising and grant opportunities. The Shakespeare Theatre of New Jersey is engaging patrons in new ways during this time of crisis. From our popular Diary of a Theatre blog, to our new backyard stage, to our upcoming Shakespeare book club, our live and virtual programming is creating connections that people crave. We've adapted to the new reality through email blasts, website posts, voicemail, social media, and a redesigned website that simplifies registering for our online in-person classes. Here at Perkins Center for the Arts, we've remained connected to our communities through new virtual and online engagement opportunities, classes, programs, and events, and now through socially responsible and physically distant programs. The Atlantic City Free Public Library AC Heritage Collections has remained connected to the public by answering research questions through email, phone, fax, and or curbside pickup. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the center at Camden County College has stayed connected to its patrons via email and by offering programming remotely advertised through an electronic brochure. Project Yellowstone at the County College of Morris has remained connected to our audiences during the pandemic by adapting our programming such as a trivia night, book discussions, and guest lectures to an online format via Zoom. At the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts, we've remained connected to our audiences by creating and adapting programs that can be accessed remotely and by listening to the needs of our community, responding with a new activism and civic responsibility with less focus on objects. The Woodbury Public Library has continued to serve our community throughout the pandemic by adapting our traditional services into virtual story times, online reference help, contactless book pickup, and internet access by appointment. All of us here at Roxy Ballet have been staying in communication with our patrons and our dancers through Zooming, social media. We have been doing an on-point newsletter and video cast, and we look forward to our presentation of the American Holiday Classic Nutcracker virtually. The Mendham Township Library was able to remain connected to our audience and to our patrons during the coronavirus by increasing our digital collection, as well as by offering programs and presentations virtually using social media and other platforms. Indian American Club during COVID-19 pandemic has organized Indian dance event on September 19 can be viewed on facebook.com slash event now USA. Additionally, collaborated with Rutgers oral history archives for virtual presentation on October 14 by citing interviews of foreign body migrants. Thanks to the New Jersey Council for the Humanities, the Howard's Municipal Library has been able to maintain high-quality collections, offer digital services, and continue to provide dynamic virtual programs during the pandemic. We created a weekly update for our website and Facebook pages called Westside Wednesdays that highlighted the people and places that made Springwood Avenue a mecca for musicians and visitors. Battleship New Jersey has made over 100 educational YouTube videos for both kids and adults to stay connected to the museum while staying indoors. 
The last six months have been challenging for us as we have had a mission orientated around bringing people together without the capacity to share the same physical space or even the air that we breathe, we've had to resort to an entirely virtual experience. All of our exhibitions and programs are now located in the ether. During the COVID-19 public health emergency, Tucker and Seaport and Bayman's Museum was able to continue to serve its audience both online and with programming out on the water on our floating classroom pontoon boat. Cherry Hill Public Library has stayed connected with our patrons through regular email and social media updates, virtual programming on YouTube and through Zoom, expanded digital collections, contactless item pickup, and careful reopening of our building so that our community can safely access all of the essential services that our library provides. The New Jersey Vietnam Veterans Memorial Foundation is creating virtual tours and digitized exhibitions to bring our content to our audiences remotely. These elements will be shared on our website at njvvmf.org and on our social media. With NJCH's support, we are able to develop new ways to provide meaningful connections to our work during these uncertain times. How has the Montclair History Center connected with our audiences during a pandemic? Thank God for Zooming. It's April 1st, we've had 38 Zoom programs with about 1,500 people tuning in. Going forward, Zooming will be a regular part of our programming mix. Here at the historic village at Allaire, we are staying connected to our audiences through a combination of online engagement, virtual education programs, and socially distant historical demonstrations and events in the village. The pandemic has given us great challenges, but we were very fortunate that we have a great outdoor space, including our outdoor signage, and we had visitors throughout the entire shutdown. Since March, the Newark Public Library has pivoted from in-person programming services to providing over 330 virtual programs, which have reached over half a million people on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and our website. We strive to create programming for everyone, and all of our videos can be found on www.npl.org. As strong as these times have been, I know I've been proud to be a part of the Nick Virgilio Haiku Association's uh, new investment in social media campaigns, in uh, online poetry workshops, in expanding its audience worldwide, and uh, really showing how poetry can heal uh, people across the world, across time, and across culture. We at the Ukrainian History and Education Center have stayed connected with and even expanded our audience by moving our educational programming online through videos and webinars. And we now reach a broad and diverse population of all ages across New Jersey, North America, and beyond. The Newark Museum of Art is grateful to the New Jersey Council for the Humanities. With your help, we were able to pivot within weeks to a virtual museum serving thousands throughout the state. We have used our grant award from the National Council for the Humanities to create a short film and a virtual tour to show how the site of our museum represents the evolution of the African American heritage in the Sourland Mountain region. NJHC funding has helped us produce virtual tours of our sites, including the historic Cape May Lighthouse and the Enlin Physic House Museum, availing these gems of our nation's only National Historic Landmark City to anyone, anytime, anywhere. With the support of a New Jersey Council for the Humanities COVID-19 response grant, Roebling Museum created new outdoor tours and virtual programs to stay connected to the public. Now we have the tools and experiences we need in order to serve a more diverse audience, including people from New Jersey and beyond. Thanks to the funding from the New Jersey Council for the Humanities, the American Labor Museum continues to have a great impact on the general public with its educational and cultural programs. We have virtual tours, meetings and classes, and on-site tours by appointments. What have we learned during the pandemic? Well, we've learned the value of a walk. We've learned how to do without. We've learned how to adapt and change. At the Council, we've learned many important lessons, but some of the most important ones we've learned from our COVID-19 grantees. What I've found is that we have an extremely dedicated staff, a staff that's full of great ideas, and we are of a size that has allowed us to respond quickly to the changes that are necessary due to the pandemic. As Wheaton Arts navigates the uncertainty brought to all of our lives by the pandemic, we've learned that one thing that remains very certain is that our mission to engage artists and audiences is just as relevant, necessary, and meaningful to our local, regional, and national communities. 
The Center for Community Arts has been reminded that dedicated, committed volunteers are essential during periods of stress. During the pandemic, we at the Roxbury Public Library learned that our community needs an organization that is truly of the people. The library did more than anyone expects a library to do. Because of this, we were able to connect with new and former users, whose perception of the public library will forever be changed. At the Historical Society of Princeton, we have learned through our adaptive programming that our audiences are very flexible and that they are hungry for relevant histories and historical context to help them understand how our community overcame past challenges. At the Willingboro Public Library, we have learned how important the relationship between our staff and our community is, and we thank the New Jersey Council for the Humanities for helping us to preserve it. The Historical Society of Haddonfield has learned that our core audience is still very much engaged with the work that we do and with our community's local history, even when they can't visit us in person. There's been a sudden surge in home buying here in South Jersey, and it's got us thinking that there may be a new urban proletariat that's been detethered from offices in big cities that would like to uh, buy, invest in an underpriced historic home here in Bridgeton. At the University of Orange, we've learned that reaffirming our principles allows us to be effective in times of crisis. Our principles include acknowledging and fighting racism and supporting local leadership. At the Bordentown Historical Society, our mission is to preserve, teach, and inspire curiosity about Bordentown's rich history. And while we recognize there is no substitution for in-person interaction, we have realized that even a small group of engaged, active volunteers can keep pushing that mission forward. During this worldwide pandemic, we here at the Aviation Museum were pleasantly surprised to learn that we had a strong following from our paid members, those in the local community, and also those uh, visiting on vacation here at the Jersey Shore. At the Alice Paul Institute, the pandemic has taught us that through virtual programs, we can serve a larger audience that is national and even international, connecting people who want to celebrate and learn more about women's history and voting rights in America. If the past months have taught us anything at the Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center, is that Yogi's values which drive all of our work, respect, determination, teamwork, excellence, those are the values that are desperately needed to see us through the challenges we currently face. What we learned about the Trend House Association during the COVID-19 pandemic is that our infrastructure, while resilient, needs an infusion of wider perspectives that encompass more than the literal idea of what a historic house could be and how it can serve the needs of our community. What I've learned about our organization is that we're flexible and adaptable. And what I've learned about our audience is that they are open and they are also adaptable and they are willing to receive our programming in new and different ways, and that's been a great discovery. What we've learned about our organization during this pandemic is that we were meant for social distancing. Our programming is largely outdoors on our docks and on the deck of the A.J. Muirwald. Um, so this has been actually a very good season for us, and we'd like to thank uh, New Jersey for its support. We are honored to be able to share more about how our grantees managed through the global health crisis. From convening gatherings in digital space to reimagining programming, you will be hearing more about how the nonprofit sector responded with grit and determination to its many challenges. It's been our role and honor to serve the state over the past five decades, providing support and resources to organizations doing work that serves the greater good. The work of the Monmouth County Historical Association is significant because we advocate for the relevance of history and how an understanding of history can provide guidance as we look for solutions to contemporary problems and concerns. At the Ringwood Public Library, our work in the community is significant because we connect people with culture, we connect people with books and ideas, and we help to foster civic engagement. The Esther Robb Holocaust Museum and Goodwin Education Center impacts our community by using the lessons of kindness and acceptance that we learn from the Holocaust as we continue to educate new generations to help fight hatred against all people. Meadows Foundation stewards four historic homes in the Somerset section of Franklin Township, New Jersey. Its mission is to give the past a future 
through preserving these homesteads for the education, recreation, and appreciation of this and future generations. We have the opportunity to change what's happening in America today. And one of the exhibits we just were able to put up is called Black Lives Matter. The Jewish Historical Society of North Jersey is the only organization to collect the history of the Jewish communities of Bergen, Hudson, and Passaic counties to save and share for posterity. The South Orange Maplewood Community Coalition on Race believes that when we talk about race, we have the opportunity to increase understanding, build relationships across racial and cultural divides, in order to meet our mission to create equitable, stronger communities. We shake the bark off of people. We keep their imaginations flexible and open to new and life-changing possibilities. And this world hums with their empathy. We teach public speaking skills to youth from seven to 18 years of age. Jasmine? Hi, I'm Jasmine Millett, and I'm a member of the Somerset chapter of the New Jersey Orate. The Lake of Packham Foundation is a community building nonprofit focusing on environmental protection, public safety, and education. And we provide unique cultural opportunities such as our most recent Smithsonian Vote for Women's poster exhibit. Our work at the Waldwood Public Library is valued by every one of our patrons because they know we're passionate about bringing informative, educational, and entertaining pursuits to every member of our library community. The Sarah Conservancy's mission is to protect, promote, and preserve the unique character of the Sarah Mountain region of Central New Jersey. We accomplish our mission through education, advocacy, and stewardship. Our outdoor spaces, our rivers and streams and forested lands are a tremendous refuge from indoor COVID isolation. And the Lower Raritan Watershed Partnership works to make these spaces healthy and accessible for our urban communities. The Historical Society of Ocean Grove's work continues to be significant by providing an insight into the history of Ocean Grove, including their current window exhibit of the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote. Our museum is significant to the community we serve because we help to create a sense of shared heritage while also providing the perspective that only history can give us and our impact is to build connections with the past and with each other. Literacy Volunteers of Somerset County is providing English tutoring to adults on video chat. Our volunteers are helping students prepare for job interviews, homeschool their children, decipher the news, and read a good book. As a science museum, many of our visitors are former engineers who know a lot about the artifacts that we have, but we tell the stories behind them and show how history matters in the development of technology. We are creating the Alexander Hamilton Visitor Center at the Patterson Great Falls National Park, which will bring extraordinary economic and educational benefits for our city and the state. Those stories of resilience, fortitude, and service in the face of incredibly challenging times have inspired us. We hope that they inspire you too. To learn more about our grantees, visit njhumanities.org. And thank you to everyone who has continued to serve the state of New Jersey during these very difficult months. Because of the grant received from the New Jersey Council for the Humanities, we are open to the public and serving the people of New Jersey. Thank you. NJCH. The Twin Lights Historical Society is happy to report that folks still come to visit the Twin Lights National Landmark during COVID, even though all our doors are closed. So say thanks to our intrepid employees from the state and the society who make this all possible. I just want to say thank you to the New Jersey Council for the Humanities for our emergency COVID grant because without you, myself, our education coordinator, and our oral history project manager would still not be working. So thank you very much and all of your money went to good work. Thank you to the New Jersey Council for the Humanities. We have been, are, and will be your Humanities Council, New Jersey.